So today, I want to tell you about Galileo, which is an invented instrument with five pendulums that swing according to the pendulum laws of Galileo Galilei. And we are in the apartment of my um, uh, sister-in-law, Matilda Ferrer, because she has a high ceiling. And this is uh, where I could install and work on uh, Galileo. Because, well, here's a, a photo of Galileo as it was installed in um, Malpartida in Spain, in the Fostel Museum. That's a sculpture of both Fostel in the background. Um, so you can see it needs an attach point about four and a half meters high. And so that's why I had to come here in order to um, practice and develop the piece. I was developing the piece between the years of 2000 and 2005, um, and I played the piece rather often uh, in this period. Um, but I, around 2008, um, I realized I'm not playing this piece any better anymore. Maybe it's better to find a younger musician who will play it better. Well, uh, the choice was obvious because my old friend Pierre Berthe from Liège I liked my music for a long time. and In fact, he had gone out of his way a couple of times to watch me play uh, Galileo. And uh, besides, he had a background as a percussionist. So I asked him if uh, for the birthday concert for my 70th birthday in Amsterdam in 2009, if he didn't want to play the piece himself. I would loan him the instrument and he could learn the piece well. He agreed to do that. And already that first time he was playing the piece better than I could. So uh, I was very pleased. But afterwards when I asked him, uh, when are you going to return the instrument? He said, I don't want to return it. I want to buy it. <laughs> so he reimbursed me some of the costs for the instrument, and uh, uh, he said, you know, this goes very well along with my own performances and installations, and I want to continue doing this piece. Well, this was a good decision for him and for me, and since then, Pierre performs Galileo several times a year in quite a few different countries. While Pierre is installing the instrument, I can tell you a little bit more about this. I had been interested in some time uh, about finding the music instead of composing it. Well, if you decide to work with pendulums, there's no way to compose anything. You just have to wait for the pendulums to swing back and try to hit them at exactly the right moment. And then the other pendulum, same way. So this is a music you just have to find, and you can't compose anything. The piece began uh, with just three pendulums in a short 10-minute version that I did in a cultural center in Amiens in 2000. And it was just very primitive, but it was the idea was there. And later I developed it with four pendulums and finally five pendulums. Today there are five pendulums and 25 movements that use the pendulums in all the different combinations. And the piece takes almost 50 minutes. And it wasn't until 2002 when an artist in Bordeaux saw the piece, but he had an engineering background. He said, you know, uh, you could make a good instrument. Let me work on that. So I commissioned him to build the instrument, which uh, finally became the real Galileo. But uh, there were a number of other problems, because sometimes it could be on a tree, like in that case in, uh, in uh, Malpartita in uh, Spain. Sometimes it could be on a balcony, as we have here. But sometimes they had to be next against a wall, and in that case, you have to make the pendulums a little further away, so otherwise they're going to, the long one, the slow one, is going to hit against the wall, and you don't want that. Uh, anyway, 
uh, Eric Castanis solved all these problems and in such a way that it all collapsed into five aluminum lengths of two meters and fit into a ski bag which could be easily transported on a plane or a train or in a car and was uh, eminently uh, practical. I should add that uh, this instrument uh, for playing Galileo is the only one that exists in the world. Uh, several people have wanted to play it themselves and in fact all the information you need is here in the score, how to build the instrument and everything. But the uh, technical difficulties are pretty hard for anybody and um, even people who wanted very much to play Galileo never managed to build an instrument that they can um, use easily. But maybe that will happen someday and there will be several Galileo, Galileo instruments in the world. But I think the instrument is ready now, so I'll just let Pierre explain, as he does before any performance, how the proportions work between one pendulum and another, and play a few excerpts from the piece. Pierre. Galileo discovered a, f a few things about pendulums. He found out a few things. For example, he realized that the, the, s the tempo of a pendulum depends exclusively on its length, not on his weight, not about the fact that, I, that you could give a lot of energy to it. Uh, this energy you put will increase the amplitude, but the tempo will remain the same. Let me show you that with this pendulum. So I, I give him a lot of energy. One, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, now I will give him a little bit of energy. One, one, two, one, two. So it's exactly the same speed. I don't have any things to increase the, the weight of this or to put less weight, but I guess you trust me if I tell you that if you hang an elephant there or a mouse, it will be the same speed, theoretically. So that's one thing uh, Galileo found out. And then he found out another thing also that uh, you have to square the periodic relation between two pendulums to get the length relation between these two pendulums. And this might sound a bit complicated, so I will try to demonstrate this with an example. So Tom Johnson decided to have the relation 1 for 2 between the longest of this pendulum and the shortest. So the shortest, he wanted it to be twice as fast as the longest. Let's see if he succeeded. One, two, one. Two. One, two, together, two, together, two. So, it was a success. Maybe I should just play the first, the introduction, the first part of the first part of Galileo, so that you see, you see and hear what it's all about. Because that's a music to be heard, and also that's a music to be seen because when you see the relations, the rhythmic relations at the same time as you hear them. So I will play the very first beginning. So, so I have to swing this one and hit it. Yeah, the principle of this of the player, the player has to hit the pendulum just a little bit after it arrives to him. I, if I hit it too soon, 
then the amplitude will reduce progressively and it will be a big mess. It's better to hit it a little bit after so that you feed the swing. Hmm? Feed, feeding the swing is important in all music, but especially in this one.
people used to think that music is melody, but music is also rhythm. And this is a piece that focuses on rhythm, but there is melody also because the bars have not the same length. This bar is a half of this one. So one, two. Then this bar is two thirds of this one. This bar is three fourths of this one. And this bar is four fifths of this one. And that was the decision of the composer to do it that way because uh, to have a, a relation between uh, the, 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 the length of this bar and the periodic relation. And this decision implied a certain scale that you hear, but he didn't decide before about this scale. He just accepted that the, the, uh, the size defines the pitch. Ah! <laughs> 
<laughs> and I still love the beast.